All right, welcome back for uh, part three, and I think what will be the final uh, video in this series. Uh, if you've been watching the other two videos, uh, parts one and two, you know that we've uh, been looking at this uh, HP 5340A frequency counter. Uh, we, in part one, we looked at the filter, uh, the main filter section, we placed the uh, main filter capacitors. We also uh, looked uh, briefly at some of the, uh, at some of the interior of the counter. And uh, we looked under the can at some boards, and we talked about some other things that we had in, that I had in mind for this counter. Part two, we looked at uh, upgrading the counter's uh, time base to a, to an oven oscillator. We uh, built a mount and installed a power transformer for the uh, oven time base uh, supply. And we also uh, mounted the oven time base in the unit. And we did some breadboard testing of a power supply design to power the oscillator unit. All right, in part three, uh, now that we've completed the breadboard and testing, uh, I have uh, designed and laid out a board. And we'll take a look at that board and see how that was uh, completed. And here is the final schematic of the power supply for the new oven time base. Just a uh, real quick overview. There's three sections to this power supply. Uh, our first section here is for our oven and our oscillator supply. Uh, we've got the AC coming in through a bridge rectifier. Our new uh, oven supply, which is a regulated supply now, uh, uses our LT1085, a low dropout regulator. Some minor changes to the uh, resistor values for the divider. Uh, just basically using what I had on hand. Uh, we've changed this to a 154 uh, ohm resistor and to since we had that change there, we've changed this now to a 2400 ohm resistor. And in this design used uh, all uh, pretty much all metal film 1% resistors for the voltage regulator section. Uh, I've also added a, uh, a diode here for reverse uh, protection across the regulator. And then our oven supply here is approximately 22 volts regulated. Our uh, oscillator supply section, as you can see, I've opted to use a, a metal metal can version of uh, the LM723. The metal can version is the LM723CH, uh, and you'll see why in a minute when we look at the actual board. Uh, why I chose this layout. The board is a is a very compact uh, layout, and uh, we'll see here in a minute. But um, with the, the metal can version, of course, the pin uh, numbers have changed. Uh, the function, the pins are, uh, are not uh, identical uh, in placement for the 14-pin uh, uh, dual inline package version of this IC. Uh, a couple of other minor changes, again, resistor values uh, changes to a 499 ohm resistor. And we've added an extra capacitor here on the oscillator supply of 150 microfarads and this 10 microfarad here uh, we'll look at that but that uh, we've mounted that close to the uh, feedback pin on the IC and this capacitor mounted closer to the output of the oscillator uh, oscillator supply and the third section uh, up here just our uh, indicator for the oven cold uh, indicator on the front panel and it's just simply uh, uh, an NPN uh, transistor here, which is fed from the uh, oven cold pin of the oscillator and then out to the asterisk indicator on the front panel. Here's a large, uh, not to scale version of the board layout showing uh, just uh, for component placement. We've got our uh, low dropout regulator here in the top, our uh, fil bulk filter capacitor here mounted. Uh, it looks like a, it's it's a, we used a, a radial uh, capacitor for this, but uh, laid it on its side for space. Our components here for our uh, new regulated oven supply, and the rest of the circuitry down here uh, for the oscillator supply. Of course, there's our bridge rectifier, and here is our um, LM723 voltage regulator. And you can see from this board layout here. Uh, why um, why I opted to go with the metal can version because it needed something with a little bit smaller of a footprint that uh, than the um, 
than the 14-pin uh, plastic package had. This is an actual two-scale uh, board layout here. And just to give you a, a, some si a size reference, so here's a, uh, here's a ruler. As you can see, the board's only two inches across. And uh, so there's not very much room. I believe it's uh, somewhere around three inches, two, looks like two and uh, about three quarters inch uh, total in length there. So it's a fairly small board. One thing that uh, was helpful, it was uh, made a uh, cardboard cutout here of the board uh, just to sort of fit test um, this size board into the frequency counter just to make sure that uh, the board would actually fit uh, in the unit and that uh, we had clearance on the top for the top panel and that uh, you know everything would line up as far as uh, lining up with the plastic guide pins that are mounted in the uh, frequency counter chassis. And these are the um, negatives for the develop and the PCB. Uh, when I do, when I make PCBs, I use a, a photo transfer method. Um, get uh, two, two negatives. Uh, we have one for the bottom side and then one for the top side. This is a, a dual-sided PCB. Um, since these pins, these pins on the uh, card edge connector, we needed more than uh, more than six pins to make all of the connections. So we had to go with a dual-sided PCB. Also, just because of the size of, of this board and the number of components, really needed a dual-sided PCB just to route all the traces without having to uh, use a lot of jumper wires and whatnot. But uh, all the traces, uh, we've got all the traces either on the top side or the, uh, or the bottom side. Uh, you know, I thought briefly about doing a surface-mounted board but I uh, decided just to go with the through hole since that's what I had as far as components on hand and without having to buy a bunch of uh, new uh, surface mounted components. And this is the completed board. Take a look uh, just at the board itself. This is the top side, obviously. We've got our um, low dropout regulator here and it's mounted, uh, it's mounted a little bit uh, in a little bit different fashion than you might uh, might be used to seeing it mounted, but mounting it this way allows us to uh, add the heat sink because this unit does get a little bit warm without a heat sink on it. But, and it gives us, the, like I said, the ability to mount a heat sink and then with a, um, using a, a standoff there, we can rigidly attach it to the board and it's a very strong way, uh, strong mounting there. We don't have to worry about this uh, uh, vibrating or uh, any, of the, any of it breaking off. And and also a uh, applied a good amount of uh, thermal thermal paste there just to make sure that we get a heat transfer to the heat sink. This is uh, since this the tab of this uh, regulator is not an isolated tab, we uh, we need to keep it isolated from the um, from the ground plane here on the bottom side of the board, and that's what we've done there with the um, nylon washer on the screw. Uh, the major sections, again, like I said, our low dropout regulator for the uh, oven supply here and the circuitry here for that, our bulk filter capacitor here, our bridge rectifier, and our uh, oven, our oscillator supply here with our uh, LM723 IC and the 10-pin uh, metal can package. As you can see, we've used uh, all 1% uh, metal, 1% tolerance uh, metal film resistors. Except uh, for these two here, which this, these are the two 24 ohm uh, resistors, and these are two watt uh, 24 ohm resistors in parallel to give us a total of 12 ohms for the uh, for the current limiting of the LM723. And the one 5% uh, carbon film down here is a 750 ohm resistor that is the uh, base uh, resistor for the uh, oven cold indicator, and it's not... Uh, there, there's no uh, real critical need for that to be a uh, any kind of uh, special tolerance, so I just used a 5% resistor is what I had on hand. Our 12 volt center diode here for our LM723 and our adjustment for our regulated uh, 11 to 13 volt oscillator supply here. And we used a uh, 
an adjustable uh, trim resistor here with the with the adjustment on the side. That way, uh, once the unit's plugged in, you can get in here with a small screwdriver and make adjustments. So this is the uh, top. This is the top side of the board, uh, and our bottom side here did have a slight uh, little mishap with the uh, cutting the board here. You can see a little bit of the the uh, tops. The top plane has been removed, and that was just because uh, when I cut this board before developing it, um, just the cutting action sort of removed some of the uh, photo. Uh, photoresistive material from the board so just you know something to keep in mind if you're going to do if you're going to be using a photoresistive pre-treated photoresistive boards and cutting them before you develop them make sure you give yourself plenty of extra room because when along the cutting edge you will get some of this uh, this loss of um, your uh, your photoresist chemical will tend to lift up off the uh, the protective coating and here is our board now installed in the frequency counter. As you can see, it uh, fits in very nicely. Uh, plenty of room here for all of the uh, components. We've got plenty of clearance here between the uh, the heat sink of the uh, of the low dropout regulator and this uh, uh, cardboard sheeting here, and right in line with the of course with the airflow of the uh, for the power supply section so that uh, that will draw air across this unit to keep it uh, to be keep it cool so we've got the unit plugged in now and let's take a look at our voltages so looking up at the uh, top display we see the regulated supply for the oscillator section sitting at uh, right at 11.2 11.3 volts and our oven supply, which is sitting at uh, right around 20, uh, almost 21 volts. All right, we've got the unit powered on now. Uh, still looking at our, uh, we're just in uh, check mode and we can see that the asterisk light here is lit, telling us that the oven is cold. Uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, just wait a few minutes and the oven once the oven warms up, we'll make sure that that asterisk light um, extinguishes to let us know that, uh, like I said, to let us know that the oven is warm. And now we can see that our oven cold light, the little asterisk, is extinguished. So that tells us that uh, the oven is warm and the uh, frequency counter is ready for uh, for use with, uh, with, an with our new uh, ovenized time base. And we can see that uh, our voltage is here real quick. Just again, looking at our oscillator supply has not, uh, has not changed. And our regulated oven supply is, uh, is now also uh, nice and stable. All right. So that completes uh, this video, part three. Uh, and we have uh, completed the upgrade on this frequency counter, installing our new oven time base with our uh, power supply transformer and our regulated power supply here, as well as upgrading, or not upgrading, but rather uh, replacing our bulk uh, filter capacitors here. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you found something useful that you could take if you uh, decide to undertake uh, a project like this. And that, uh, so like I said, this, uh, this series is now complete. Uh, hope you, uh, stay uh, subscribed and look for videos more videos coming up in the future thanks for watching